Hello guys, welcome to TA Fishing. Um, you actually caught us out in the woods because we're filming a TA Outdoors episode at the moment, uh, or our other YouTube channel. Yep. But uh, thanks very much for clicking on the video. And we're just gonna talk to you a bit about fishing and actually we've got loads of cool fishing clips to show you. But what I wanna know is for you, Dad, have you caught a fish first cast? Have you ever caught it first cast? Not yeah. bait wise, lure as well. Have you done lure first cast? Yeah, occasionally it happens, it's sort of quite rare sometimes, you know. Yeah. Uh, on baits or lures. Well, what we got is a, a load of little, like a little montage of clips from all our uh, our fouled expeditions, yeah. I want to call them. Yeah, and we listen, kept guys, the footage. They're not, we kept the footage, we never yeah. throw anything away. So we're going to put it together. So, yes, I can remember one that did stick in my mind, and that was, um, it was down in Devon. Uh, it was at uh, a place called Angler's Paradise, and they got a species in there called grass carp. And the grass carp were really tricky in this one lake. I was only down there for one day, I think I stayed one night there. Um, so I got up in the next morning quite early, 10. Uh, no, I got up about 8 and started fishing at 10. Uh, went down the lake, and as I was walking along, I saw the elusive grass carp on the surface. About four of them. They were really spooky. I just had one rock together, and I can't even tell you what I was using, whether it was bread crust or what are we using? Maybe dog biscuits. But yeah, dog biscuits, yeah. Anyway, first cast, I hooked up this fish. Man, was it lucky or what? I had a lot of trouble playing the fish, a really powerful fish, the grass carp. Uh, it took me up and down the lake. I'd literally just dumped all my gear, which you'll see on the bank, I dropped everything. I hadn't even got my landing net ready. And even though the fish gave me a good scrap up and down, when I look around, the landing net is not even screwed together. I mean, how <laughs> dumb is that? I didn't even bother screwing the pole into the landing net. I just got, I tried to make with my hand a sort of A-frame out of the net and I managed to scoop it into that. But luckily, nice little grass carp. And as you can see here, they've got a sort of, almost like chub-like with their mouth. But although they've got quite a large mouth, they're a tricky old fish to catch at times. So if you get the chance to catch a grass carp, my tip is, if you get one cast at them, make sure that's the right cast. Well, that wasn't a bad uh, grass carp, that I have to admit. I don't think I've caught. I don't think I've caught. Well, I've caught one, I think, but nothing like you know spectacular. And I know they are hard fighting fish, mm. generally the grass carp. But I'm just thinking again now of uh, some of our fishing memories, and I do seem to remember when I was about eight years old, you had a rod that was. I don't know you were boasting how cheap it was, about four nine, four ninety nine or something. Four dollars ninety nine. Four dollars ninety nine. Three pounds in the Florida Keys. I mean. Uh, I don't remember too much of it other than it saw a hell of a lot of action. Yeah, it was our bait fish rod. We used to call it catch a live fish for tarpon, uh, called a pinfish. And it was just a little thing that we got out the Kmart supermarket. Unbelievable. Still got it. You still got it. Still got it. Still use it occasionally for fun. It's only like, must be fiberglass. I mean, yeah. 4 99 the rings are probably worth more than the rod blank. <laughs> anyway, I decided to take it to one of the day ticket waters and fish for perch close in. You remember we used to fish oh, close yeah, in yeah, around yeah. those... Uh, like the margins. Yes, around the yeah. margins, around the overhanging trees. Yeah. I dropped it down with a prawn on, as you do for perch. Unfortunately, a perch didn't eat it. This is what ate it. Well, guys, first first drop, I, I pulled the bobbin down. It just pulled it out of my fingers. I don't think it's going to be anything like a bream. It's too big, but look at the sport on this rod. 4 .99. That's all it was about 20 years ago in Kmart in America. You American anglers over there got no idea how lucky you are to get cheap tackle like this. It's probably only fiberglass, but it's coping with this fish admirably, which must be a part. And I'm playing it for a little bit extra pressure on back line as well. And that bait was prawn. There's always a chance here, bream, carp, mixed fishing, roach, and possibly a perch. Wow, he's really going well. Wow. 
It's getting worse. There you go, when I spoke to John the Bailiff, he said, I'll tell you what, he said, I doubt you'll get the bait past the carp, even with prawns. That's a nice common carp. Get it back and see if I can catch that a bit different. Um, I do really enjoy my drop shot fishing, especially on the sea. Um, and I do actually Rats, think there was, a, there was a time quite recently where you beat me. You came to me this time down light tackle again, wasn't it? Same, down on same the coast, sort of rigs. Rock fishing. Same sort of rigs. Uh, I don't actually know where it was, but when we got down there, it was a sort of a windy day and we went out on the rocks right at the end of something. Do you know, I think it might have been what, Portland Bill or somewhere like that? Could somewhere really rocky, on the south coast of the UK. It was on the south yeah. coast. Anyway, a lot of you guys will recognise the marks here that we've been filming. And wherever this area is, there's absolutely, as you can see here, a huge tide race out there. I can't remember if it was flooding or ebbing, but I've got a feeling it must be down off Portland. Maybe somebody can tell us, is that Portland Bill tide race there? I don't think any boats were going through it at the time, and I wouldn't want to fall in the water there, but a good spot, no doubt. Yeah. And I've always fancied looking at places like that with that current on the inside of the eddy, maybe it's a sort of place that you could get big conga. And we were looking for the sort of inside ledges where the water drops away. Now we might have been there at the wrong time because it was like low tide when we were there, it was, wasn't it? Again, front conditions were against us, definitely. Yeah, they were against us. But what I was using was uh, just uh, very, very small. I think I had about half a ragworm on a very small freshwater hook, probably a size two. Yeah. And uh, just flicking it and dropping it right down the margins uh, as close as I could to wee beds. And look, the rats weren't big but there were rats, it just goes to show you that sometimes lures work, sometimes bait works, sometimes both works. Change it up. You just gotta change it, and if two of you are fishing together, one can fish with lures, one can fish with bait. And on this occasion, I'm just glad it was me that was fishing with the bait. Yeah, it was, yeah. Guys, I've come around the back of this old boat here, look. It's clinker boat because it's, it's blowing a bit around there, but I've got a different species here. Is it a goby? Is it a blenny? You experts must know out there what that one is. Looks like quite a big one to me, and he's taken that ras bait. Who knows what it is? Answers on a postcard. No, 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 not on a postcard, no. Just tell us, just email us what you think that fish is. It's a specimen, so.
Well, I do like fishing with light rods, everybody knows that. Not a light line, I don't want to break the fish off, light rods. So, Mike, I know, is a bit of a perch fanatic, and you yeah. like light rods as well, don't you? I, love, I, I use uh, a lot of light rods for the, for yeah. the drop shotting, because I just find it's, same with my LRF and the, and the sea fishing scene, just because it's not, you, you get a good scrap out of small fish. But I seem to remember a rock hard session uh, on, uh, at Runnymede, was it, I think? On the, on the, on the River Thames. Yeah. Uh, really, really tough session. I blanked. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, it, it, that shows how tough it was, but I did actually vaguely remember I was drop shotting, most of them, my drop shots are caught in the margin, it's generally a close in technique. Around boats and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and I, I tried all around the boats, I tried all around the snags, I really, really struggled. And I thought, sod this, I'm, I'm lobbing this drop shot out. And I cast it three quarters of the way out over the river, the bear in mind is the River Thames, yeah, you know, one big. of the biggest rivers in the UK. Um, I was right, right out in the middle, and I, most of the, I got a two, I think, quite good perch. Yeah, nice, nice Right perch. in the middle, and I don't know why, maybe it was because it was deeper, where the boats had come through a lot, and the bigger river boats had come through, and it, it eroded the bottom of the, the, the river a bit more, but the weather conditions were weird, it was a right weird day. But yeah, I, w I wonder if, as the boats went past, that's when you got to take, because I had a pike once. Stirred it up went, or Yeah, something. stirs it up, all the mud comes off the yeah. bottom, the little minnows and fish are dancing around. Oh, you had around. a pike, and right on the engine, the boat's engine almost. Once Remember? I did, I yeah, I cast from the back of a boat, because yeah. I was a bit ticked off that the guy nearly ran the float over, so I cast <laughs> as close as I could to him yeah, in I the remember. stern, and, and you know, it, I thought, well, oh God, I've got his propeller, and he got dragged under. But that day at Runnymede, it just yeah. goes to show you, you can get good perch as well. Not always on the inside. Don't no. be afraid to cast out. Cast out, pull it back slowly, that's how I got it. Another perch, I've been trying the margins loads because I'm so used to getting in the margins, but there we go. In the net, this one again, about 15 yards out. So it goes to show that... Must be a shelf out there. some sort of drop off out there, yeah. Just hooked on the scissors. There we go. Another nice looking Thames perch. And what colour? Uh, the, the same lure that I've pretty much used for the for the last couple of weeks. I caught it in the net at the moment, so but it's kind of bluey, purpley colour. Uh, one of the attractor shad DSs, so from Fish Action. It's a Fish Action one. It's yeah. another Fish Action one. Yeah, they love those Fish Action lures. And we're here down on the Thames. We're right by the main road. We've got. I mean, Heathrow, planes flying across, it's a nightmare, but I've got a lovely stripey here. I think the hook's fallen out, but what a fish. Get his dorsal up for you there. Look at that. And out in the middle, you said? Right out in the middle, I reckon, look at that dorsal there. I reckon it's um, due to the boats eroding the middle away. It's quite shallow here, close in, but that's a lovely looking perch. Really nice stripes. Uh, so I've, I cast out about 20 yards with this one on the drop shot barely tweaked it and he nailed it so I did think they'd be close in I've caught a lot of my perch close in but this one was actually 20 20 I'd say about 20, 15 20 yards out well Nigel in the tackle shop did tell us even if you want to go roach fishing uh, there's a ledge out there he said just go off the edge of the ledge yeah. he reckons it's, yeah, there's it's a five, big ledge yeah. yeah five to ten feet so yeah it's nice fish though look at the color of those fins yeah lovely colors what a fish photo fodder there that's a we'll get a quick still of this I think and then we'll get him back and I'm gonna cast straight to the same spot and I'm gonna move straight to the same <laughs> yeah. spot Right, we'll get a photo. There you go, guys. That shows you, even on a bad day, you can wink all the odd fish out. You can get one or two fish out, and it sort of salvages it, doesn't it? You know, saves it. Yeah. So thanks for watching that show. Look out for the next edition of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, and you've got the Totally Awesome Outdoors Show as well, plus our free to download magazine every two months. Uh, check it out. It's called The Awesome Angler. There's links in the video description. And if you keep an eye out, you might see the camp we've been working on today. Guys, thanks for watching the Total Gone Fishing <laughs> There we go, here we go. It's done as well. That's it. Well, there's a few clips there, guys, of just 
trips we've been out on that haven't been huge successes, but the main thing is we still caught fish at the end of the day, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. And that, and that's just got to get out there and change things up a bit. So keep watching the totally, totally awesome fishing. <laughs> <laughs> This is rushing, because I'll try again. <laughs> Put a beep there, sorry yeah. guys. <laughs> I'm trying to think where we got to. It's just annoying that we get old. You know the words that come out of your mouth and you can't <laughs> stop it's it. It's really awesome. Yeah. Fishing <laughs> We just get angry with it. Thank you.